Hello and welcome to the Practical Leadership Podcast, where I interview great leaders and try to extract their wisdom and their experience for you to learn from and hopefully avoid making their mistakes. If you want to upgrade your leadership skills in 25 minutes, check out practical-leadership.academy. Thomas Berglund, thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Let's start off with the very, very basics. Who you are, what's your background, what's important for you today? Oh, uh, I'm Thomas Berglund. Uh, Paul and I, we met many years ago in the learning industry. I'm 55 years old. I'm married. I have three daughters, all grown up. Uh, currently, I'm running my own investment and advice company. Uh, my background is a little bit special. Uh, to put things in context on my leadership strategy as well is because I, I didn't go to university. I couldn't really afford to that in those days. I played, I played ice hockey. And I went into the corporate market, but while being in the corporate market, I studied all along, extra studies, weekends, evenings. And then I founded my own e-learning company, Advantage Group, where you and I met Paul. It's all been learning related in a way uh, and sold that. And while doing that, I started a venture called CB12, which is a, a rinse against bad breath, which I sold to a pharmaceutical company. And after that, I basically set up my own investment consultancy company. I've done like 35 uh, investments. I have a current portfolio of 22 companies to kind of finish off my education, <laughs> long life education. I actually did an MBA during the COVID at the Edinburgh mm-hmm. University. So the business school, I took that uh, distance while I was in the COVID. At Edinburgh? My yeah. Edinburgh, the one yeah, that I went yeah, to. Good yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I did that all distance because you couldn't really travel. So I thought that maybe I just tick off that thing on my bucket list. So, so what is important for me, what I've uh, during the years had kind of realized got me ticking, is actually helping others succeed. So helping investors, startups. I'm currently helping a foundation uh, for former criminals and, and drug addicts to help them grow their business. That kind of give, gives me uh, a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy to help others, basically. Yeah. Which is a form of indirect leadership, actually. It, it's direct leadership. Uh, in mean, a way, yeah. I mean, the definition of, of, of somebody who is, a, for me, is a good leader is somebody who thrives through helping other people succeed, getting things done through them rather than doing it themselves. That's exactly what it is. So, so that's the important part, Paul. What then, in your experience as a self-directed, as a driven learner, as somebody with obviously strong experience, you're working with all these 22 different companies you've got in your current portfolio. Yeah, that's correct. They're going to be looking to you for guidance. And lots of these companies are going to be full of new leaders, new people who are approaching this from the first time. What advice do you give to people who are new to that role of looking after others? You could say that I started a little bit. When I got my first leadership role, I was 26 years old in, in Nokia Data. I had had a kind of a background where I was captain in hockey teams, often was picked as a, a hockey team, and then was also picked out for a, what they call in Nokia, a high flyer program, which is the name is Jesus. It's so embarrassing, but that's what they call it in those days. And uh, got into leadership very early. And, and so when I speak with young leaders today, I ask them actually to slow down. And that might sound a little bit stupid, but I'm not talking about slowing down in actually performing. I'm asking, uh, uh, telling them to slow down in relation to others, because it's, it's okay to lead by example, but it's not okay if you're 100 meters ahead of the rest of the team. You have to be a part of the team. You have to encourage people not being in front of them. And when I was 26, I, I, I basically run maybe 200 ahead of everyone else. So it's not your own performance that is important, but the collective performance of the whole team. And I didn't understand that in the beginning. I thought if I worked 14 hours, the harder I worked, the better it was for the team. But that's not the case. You succeed through others. And that was uh, what I tried to teach, especially young entrepreneurs today who think they can do anything by themselves. It's not what it's all about. So then when they come to you and you tell them to slow down, how do they do that? Most of them don't, Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not talking about them to slow down in terms of slowing down. I'm talking about them to slow down in relation to get the rest of the team aboard because what, what's driven them is 
their own self-motivation. So that's what I've realized over the years. The most powerful leadership tool is to get people to really realize what they, what they want to do themselves, e.g. self-motivation or internal drive. That is potentially the most powerful tool you has, have as a leader. Those guys running their own business, they have that because they have this vision. They have this urge, this drive to succeed. Maybe also they have a fear of failure that drives them. But they need to get the rest of the team on board to share that uh, energy. And they can only do that by also being a part of that and have their own internal motivation to help that company succeed. Does that make any sense, Paul? It makes perfect sense. Do you have a way? To do it? What do you suggest to them? That's actually a bit of the boring part of leadership is predictability. So how do you actually get people on board? It's to be predictable. It's uh, doing the strategy, asking them to the, be a part of setting the, the overall objects and goals. It's about quarterly reviews, change management, people management, and doing that in a continuous loop as a leader. Because then you create the framework around your own energy that allows other people to contribute into that development. So that is basically, and that, that's the tools, the boring part, but that is actually an extremely important part of the puzzle, especially if you want to scale a business. If you are a startup with your own, with two employees, that's not a problem. But you, when you get to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 employees, you need to have this leadership framework in place. Yeah, I mean, that's if I, if I had to pick something that there was is a, a consistent feature of the conversations I have with founders and with people newish to that, it's they get confused with the 5%, mm -hmm. which is what you see everywhere on social media and like mm -hmm. stuff like that. It's this inspirational leader, I must be the next Steve Jobs and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they forget that people who work for them, they work for a living, they don't mm -hmm. live. Uh, work, that, that, you know? I, I, that's perfect well well put uh paul and, they want and, uh, the one-to-ones they want good feedback they want the basics yeah the 95 percent of the focus yeah is what they need and they want and that's what i'm trying to do anyway, no so. that's, that's fine no no that's okay paul it's, exactly it's, uh, and that is so important and if you look at people like like the late uh, steve jobs he said he probably have a a trench of dead bodies all the, his <laughs> career or people totally. yeah, yeah that has tried to follow him and basically just burned out on the way to do that i don't know yeah. that of course it's just an yeah but whatever you, you, you can <laughs> sense it you can sense yeah. it because these, these people are they're as rare as hen's teeth as five-legged sheep as unicorns you know <laughs> they're, the, they're the amazing ones that we all want to work for they're the ones we all want to be but yeah. in reality most of us just have to do the job exactly in doing the job we all screw up. Personally, I've got a list of screw ups that could fill an encyclopedia. Yeah. What's the mistake you learned most from? So what I'm I normally tell people, so why are you help? What I'm trying to do is to help other do less mistakes than I did myself. And my biggest mistakes have all basic, I think, been into recruiting wrong people. Uh, and, and the reason for that is that that's also actually, especially in the company I founded myself, because you get so desperate that you need people to do things and you're growing, you have this all this ambition. So you get this pink glasses on when you interview people and, and you're so desperate to hire this country manager for the UK or Sweden or Denmark that you actually don't do your job. You should get someone else to do that for you <laughs> because you don't, you're not. So basically, I've employed the wrong people several times, uh, and I did I did once, I did twice, I've done it three times, maybe four times, and I don't learn my own mistakes because mm -hmm. I've I've been in a setting where I've been in. It's like negotiating a deal, and if you have all the good cards on your hand, it's easy to negotiate. When you don't have any good cards in your hand, it's very difficult to negotiate. And if you really need someone, you're not set to make the right decisions. It's like hungry, buying food when you're hungry. Yeah, you buy all this crap you shouldn't buy because your stomach tells you need this chocolate bar or whatever it is. Chips you know? and chocolate. <laughs> all of that. So it's the same. So that is, uh, to just summarize, it's, it's um, the worst mistakes I've done because they are so costly. It takes six months to find it out and it takes six months to get rid of people and they have lost a year. And if you're at early stage, that's just crippling. Exactly. It's, it's crippling. Yeah. So let's say I'm, I'm one of your one of your 22 founders 
and I say, look, uh, Thomas, I need to hire a new, new head of product. You're going to tell me what not to do. Yeah, I would ask more. I would ask second opinions. Uh, I, I would ask, uh, first, of course, the chemistry needs to be there. But I would also like to have trusted uh, opinions, either professional people that can help you, which largely, I mean, large organizations normally have that, but you don't have that in small, mid-sized companies. But if you could afford professional help, or at least let two, three other people check references, uh, have interviewed the same candidate as you have, uh, even though you feel you don't, are out of time, you should have employed that people three months ago. Don't go into that trap. Um, use your network. Use your friends or friends' friends to help interview that person and meet them to see if they get the same impression as you have. Because somewhere deep, deep, deep inside, you know it might not be the right decision, but you keep pushing that down because you, you're in such a need. So that, I that would be my recommendation. You check the chemistry, get your second opinion, use some trusted advisors, check references. That's the one thing people never do these days. No, never they check do. references. It's yeah. You know, past performance is a sign of future potential. Yeah, it is. It it doesn't, is. They don't necessarily need to know how to do this job, but have they done the last job well? Did they yeah. learn? Did they do that sort of good stuff? Check yeah. your references. Use your help. Use your network. What are you working on at present, Thomas? What's big oh, for you? Big for me, I admit it. It's, it's, it's my startup portfolio, but I'm also helping a foundation, uh, which I met through a friend, a founder who... He was a former dr drug addict himself, uh, was a professional ballet dancer, Norwegian champion in boxing, got on the wrong side of the track. And, and uh, basically, then he went to India, become a yoga master instructor, came back and wanted to give back to people. So he started something called Back in the Ring, which is a foundation who helping former uh, inmates and uh, drug addicts uh, through yoga and meditation and philosophy and other things to get back in life. I'm helping him through a startup program, which they have attended. So he, basically they're coaching, helping them. And I do a pro bono work for him. Uh, so I, before you and I talked today, I went into like 45 minutes pitching session, training with them online uh, with this kind of huge um, investment company who invests the impact investment called FERD in, in, in Norway, who has invested a lot of money in, in uh, foundation, non-for-profit. So they have set up this team or this kind of six, um, eight months program we're back in the ring came into. So uh, uh, and I'm helping them there. It's, very, it's extremely rewarding because you are listening to people presenting things that they will never make money on. They will never get rich, but they still have the same glow in their eyes and the same energy as the people I meet who, who wants to become the next Steve Jobs or big billionaire. It's the same in the drive, although they are never going to get rich on it. They are helping others. So, and that is uh, rewarding in a way. Not everybody's driven by uh, money. That's really. the thing. I think that's probably, yeah, but that's the conclusion. I think the founders of the, 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 the claim to become the next million billionaires, whatever, on a daily basis, you can't live on that uh, because that's not uh, sustainable uh, as a driver. You need to have something else. And, and that I see now, it's, it's obvious. Yeah. Coming back to leadership. In the drive, self motivation. What's the purpose? Yeah, was it? Is um, Dan Pink? You know the the surprising truth about things that motivate us. He says it's autonomy, mastery, and purpose that motivate yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the the purpose thing, you've got the big changing the world purpose. Yeah. Then you've also got the little purpose, the small P yeah. purpose yeah. that gets you out of bed in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. Back in the ring. What a great name as well. I know, yeah. a yoga master from India. Wow. Yeah, and he was a, he was a professional ballet dancer. And he uh, was the Norwegian champion in boxing. It's pretty cool, yeah? So as an autodidact, as a driven, self-directed learner, Thomas, yeah. what are you learning just now? What are you reading? What do you, you listen to? Where's your, where's your... <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the funny part because so I would love to say nothing, but actually do read something. And, and that is, uh, but it's slowly. I read this Charles Dickens, uh, The Great Expectations, currently oh. reading that book. But oh, I've been good. reading half of it for three months because honestly, after studying four to five hours every day, reading for one and a half years to MBA, I was so fed up reading. I read some, but not much. Uh, so I need to 
catch up on that. So I don't read any like leadership lectures or anything like that at the moment now. Well, yeah. I was so tired after reading every day for one and a half. I read four or five hours every day, seven days a week. And that was tiring, I promise you. Mm. Like, but you know what? Great expectations or some life lessons there, I'm sure. Yeah, no, no, oh, there are a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. oh, I'll carry on from great expectations. You have the, the, the younger characters. What would you then thank your younger self? Oh, that was a very good question. A difficult answer. Uh, would, I, would I thank myself? So what I'm grateful for is that I manage to convince people to join my team. I've made this leadership program and one of the coaches that told me that you have the, you have the, not the rare, but you have this quality of getting people to believe in you and wanting to help you or investors or partners or being, I hope, honest, open, hardworking, people can see that. And, and by doing that, they want to, to help you succeed. Uh, I think that is probably I would like to thank myself that in a very early age, I managed to do that. It's a good thing to be grateful for. And I, I, can, I can personally attest to your abilities there. I'm, I'm trying to do my best all the time. I'm not, yeah. not necessarily always succeed, uh, but I'm honest with that as well. So. And, and then lastly, to keep this short and sweet, how can people find you? They can find me through LinkedIn, but they can use reach me on my email. It's uh, thomas.berglund at ocular.no. From great expectations through self-directed learning to a, a grateful 26-year-old first high-flying leader. <laughs> Don't thomas measure Berglund, <laughs> of Ocular, Thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Well, thank you, Paul. It's been a pleasure. That's a wrap. Thank you for joining me today. Your homework, subscribe and share this with a friend or colleague. Please leave your five-star review and any comments you have because that really helps me to improve every day and it helps people to discover me online. If you want to upgrade your leadership skills in 25 minutes, you should check out practical-leadership.academy.